Hi there, welcome to this build of a 48 inch wingspan Tomboy Senior. Now, this is a lovely vintage model by David Boddington and it's based on the Tomboy which was originally done by Vic Smead in 1950. As I said, a vintage model, it's got these lovely fuselage sides which we built in the last video. Two of them, a right and a left, and identical in size. Now, oh, and we've also got the wing here, which we did in previous videos. Now the next stage in this build is to actually get the fuselage sides together, get them uh, joined together with cross formers and struts and to see this fuselage really start to take shape. That's going to be really exciting because already just looking at these fuselage sides you can get an idea of what a lovely plane this is. Right, and if we look at the fuselage, the plans of the fuselage, we can see there are three cross formers. There's F1, F3 and there's F4. And these three formers are all the same width so they hold the fuselage sides parallel at this point. From F4 down to the tail, the tail pulls in and gets gradually narrower and we have cross spars that do that. But at the moment we're thinking just about these three formers. Now this one here, the firewall, is 3mm ply. We've then got this one here which is 1.5mm ply and then we have two and a half mil balsa. Now to get the width of these for the spacing of the fuselage sides, we can take that from the plan, no problem. And it's really important when we make them, I've got them here, that we have them all exactly the same width so that that fuselage side really is parallel. Now I've cut the slots or the, uh, the recesses so that they actually fit nicely onto the uh, onto the fuselage sides as they should like that if I can just get that in is that the right way? No, that way there we go so that fits onto the fuselage side like that now to get the, the, the correct spacing for these slots you can take that from the sides that you've made don't take it from the plan, don't take it from the formers, all these three formers are shown on the plans, but please don't take those measurements from those formers on the plans. Get them from the sides that you've made that you want them to fit. It will be a lot more accurate. Now, so that one goes there, we've got this former here, and we've got the firewall that goes here. Now I've marked all of these left, back and right. So I know that this is the back face, left and right. So that I get them in exactly the right place and, uh, and don't inadvertently get them mixed up. Now, we can see on these front two, there are holes for these 3 8 9.5 mil beach engine bearers to go through. And what we need to be mindful of when we put these through for the spacing, we need to have the correct spacing for the engine that we are using. And if you're using a 1.3 mils, like I will be, then the spacing shown on the plans is correct and shown on the formers is correct. But what I've done to make sure that this is correct is that we've got some cheeks to go on the front of here and these cheeks are made up of 3 8 balsa 9.5 mil balsa plus some 0.8 millimeter ply so the thickness of those need to go under there because these beach sides these beach um, engine bearers need to be against those cheeks and the outside edge of those cheeks, actually that's the other way, it goes like that, the outside edge of those cheeks obviously need to be flush 
with the outside face of the fuselage and the inside needs to be flush with those engine bearers because those engine bearers will glue onto that. So that will give us the correct spacing. As I said, it needs to be right for your engine, so if you're not using the mills, you may need to uh, modify that just a little bit. So I've got these done now, and I think the next stage is to get this glued up. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the formers into place and get those nice and square on the one side. Get them glued on the one side like that and then I will put the fuselage on top and glue the second side on again making sure that it's all square. Now this section of the fuselage here this piece will need to be sheeted in with some I think it's 1 8 1 8 balsa just sheet that in really easy but we can't do that until we've actually got this former in place because obviously we couldn't get the former in place if we do that. And the other thing I've got to do, I've just remembered, before I glue this in place, is I need to make the landing gear. And I'm using some three mil or um, I think it's 10 gauge music wire, piano wire. And the shape for that is shown on the plans so it'd be really easy to bend it up and then I'm going to sew that onto there. So I will get on and do the landing gear now and then set all this up to glue it. Right well I'm just setting this up now so that I can glue these three cross formers onto the left hand side of the fuselage. Now the, this one at the back here and this central one I'm going to be CAing those in place once I'm sure they're held absolutely square. Now the firewall F1 I'm going to be epoxying that in place and something I sure thought I should point out about the landing gear in this firewall before I proceed. Now this is F1 that front former the firewall and as I said I bent up the uh, landing gear out of 3 mil. 10 gauge music wire and I've sewn that onto here with a couple of bits of balsa just to hold that in place while I was doing it and to provide a bit more strength and that's all been epoxied and we can see I'm not the neatest stitcher in the world but there you go and, uh, and that now is held really firm but a point I need to make is that when we are bending this up we cannot make it as shown on the plans because on the outside of this, on the front of this firewall, we're going to be attaching some cheeks that go on like that. And we need to allow room at the side here for the cheeks, which are made up of this 9.5 mil and 0.8 mil. So that needs to go on like that. If we make them as wide as they're shown here, the cheeks won't fit and we'll have a problem and we'll end up having to cut out some of the cheeks which will weaken them. So that's just an important point to make, to make sure that you've got enough gap there for those cheeks. Right, well I'm going to get on now and glue these firewalls, uh, sorry the firewall and these two formers in place and then once that is done I'm just going to drop this on top and glue this as well and then we'll come back and we'll see how this lovely fuselage is looking. Well the firewall now is epoxied in place and that's gone off nicely, lovely and square and I was going to do the next former down which is this one, the one and a half mil ply and I realised I need to put in a hole here, could call it a lightning hole I tend to think of it as a battery placement hole so that the battery can go right in there up to the firewall and if need be I can put it in and turn it vertically and hold it right against that firewall to get the weight forward because as I keep saying this plane is going to have a tendency to be tail heavy so I need to be able to get weight forward because the last thing I want to do is add some lead. 
so if I can move the battery up and compensate for that heavy tail all the better. Size of battery I put in there will depend on the amount of weight I need. It might be a five cell uh, um, six volt battery if I need the weight, if not I'll put something a little bit lighter in, smaller voltage. But we'll see how that goes, but anyway I thought I ought to just show that hole I've put in and I've measured that so that I can get a, a five cell through there if necessary. Right, time to glue them. Right, well I've really been cracking on with this now and I feel dead excited with how it's looking. You know, it doesn't matter how many planes I build, how often I build, I still get a real buzz and excitement when things like this start to come together and this is looking, in my mind, really, really good. So I've got the two fuselage sides glued together over this front parallel section. We've got those three cross formers in place and the third one which is the firewall with the landing gear attached to it. We just move that in. And I've also put in some of the cross braces as well. So quarter inch square cross brace there and there next to the, uh, the formers. And also on the underside I've got this bit of sheeting in and, uh, and the cross brace there. And uh, there's, yeah, there's another one there. Now I've epoxied in the engine bearers and I've done those dead straight forward. And even though there's a two degree right thrust to be put on as according to the plans, I'm going to put that by bolting the engine just slightly off two degrees. So I'm going to keep the bearers dead straight and I will adjust it in that uh, bolting of the engine in. And here's my uh, lovely mills and that sits on there really nicely. Spacing's worked out just right. Now I've got two pieces of timber here which is uh, 1 8 balsa and that is just to go into these uh, into these spaces here. Fit, they, they both fit really nice but I didn't ha or hadn't glued them in uh, so far because I wanted to get the engine bearers in first. I epoxied those in and I wanted to have access on the side here so I could make sure I got the glue where it needed to be and not running everywhere because I was trying to get it down with the stick. So anyway, that's more or less done. It needs a really good sand, but I don't want to do that at the moment. I want to draw in this tail section first, and then we will get maximum strength in the fuselage, and I can put it on its side, use one of my sanding sticks, and give it a really good sand, because there are some just some little high spots where bits have gone in. Not a lot, but it will make a difference when we come to do the covering if we don't. So the next job, as I said, is to draw in those sides and to make sure that we draw them in equally. The last thing we want to do is have one more or less straight and the other one cocked over. It's just going to look weird. So they need to come in equally. And as I keep saying, Dave Boddington says, or David Boddington says this plane ends up tail heavy and he ended up having to put lead in the front. Now the quarter inch square that I've been using for these cross formers is quite heavy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a really nice light bit of um, a quarter inch sheet and I'm going to cut myself some really nice light uh, quarter inch square and I'm going to use that for these cross members down here. So, I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five. So there's about 10, 12 cross members to go in. Okay, it's not gonna make a huge difference, but at least I'll feel, if I have to put some in, weight in the front, at least I felt I tried down at the back end. So I'm gonna set this up now. I'm gonna get that quarter inch square, and we'll come back and have a quick look at that and see how I've set it up to make sure that we get that drawn in equally. Right, well I've now got this set up and I'm ready to draw these tails in, glue them together and get in these cross struts. I've cut my really, really nice light quarter inch square, so that's ready to go. Now, the way I've set this up is I'm using the, the lines on the, uh, the cutting mats. I've made sure that both cutting mats have the lines 
lined up using this big long straight edge meter long uh, ruler and I've got the parallel section of the fuselage parallel with the lines and using those lines I found the center point down here where the two fuselage sides need to meet so I now know I'm not going to get it over to one side and a bit crooked I'm going to get them exactly in the middle and I used a sanding stick just to put a little bit of an edge or, or sorry not an edge a, a little bit of a, a chamfer on either of those tails so they just come together and give slightly more contact area for where they're going to glue together now this the, the parallel section is held solid with all these blocks it's not going anywhere and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in the tails and so and hold them in place with these blocks and if I just get that lined up yep so that is lined up with that center line now and so I'm going to glue that I'm going to CA it and then I'm going to go down and I'm going to put all these spars in now this is more or less a straight line so the gaps that we've got is more or less what they need to be it's not curving or anything like that it's just a nice straight run which makes it really easy for us so once I've got that glued I'll get in the top struts and then obviously I'll turn it over and I'll do the ones on the top of the fuselage I'll, I'll turn it over because I could do them from here but I'd like to line them up and, and see them properly now there was one other point I was going to make about doing this which, oh, I know, the, the fuselage is upside down and the reason it's upside down to do this is because this, the wing saddle is nice and flat and that's what it sat on the wing saddle. This curved area would make it difficult if I was had it the other way up to get it right and obviously I'd need to do it on the edge of the bench because of the landing gear. So, I will get this done now and uh, we'll, then we'll see how it looks. Right, well, I've now got these cross members in on the underside of the fuselage and what I'd recommend doing is when you cut these and you're happy that they're the right size cut yourself a corresponding one exactly the same length to go on the top side when you turn it over because it might be that it just flares a little bit without the struts there and you end up making it wider or, or whatever but at least if you've cut them already you know exactly what size they need to be just a suggestion there so I'll get those in now well I think it's fair to say that we now have the fuselage sides well and truly together and this fuselage is really starting to take shape and I think it looks great and as I've said before I find it really exciting when you see these start to come three-dimensional after you've been working on flat sides. Now I know there's still quite a bit to do to this fuselage, we've got a little bit of sheeting on the back there, we've got the cheeks to go either side of the engine mounts and we've got around the top of the firewall and the um, uh, cockpit and particularly it's going to take some thought to do the, uh, the, the front of the, the, uh, the cockpit here where the wings sit on and we've got the dowels to go in but all of that I'm going to be doing in the next video and I'm going to draw this video to a close now because it's uh, I'm very mindful of time and we've done what we were going to do we've pulled this fuselage together and I think as I said it's looking great and you know what there's only one thing to do now and that's to try the wings and see how it looks with the wings on so there we go and doesn't that look great whether you're into vintage models or not it's uh, it's a great looking design and I'm really excited to get on with this now and actually if we can put the engine on as well if you just bear with me so there we go still need to sort out the engine the tank design how I'm going to do that and uh, we'll get on to doing that fairly soon but there you go that's what it's starting to look like 
and uh, as I said, I'm dead chuffed with it. So anyway, I hope you found that useful, I hope you found it interesting. Thanks very much for watching and please come back and see how we get on in the build of this Tomboy Senior.